And I think if the trout are, it's kind of funky a little bit and like a little skittish, I think that the fly will, will bring more bites than the gear will. And then on the other hand, when it's a kind of a ratty old overcast rainy day, and you're making it rattling and hammering and hammering and hammering, and then I think that would be a day when I would prefer to use the crankbait. Sure. All right. All right, well, I'm Captain Jeff Top with Mango Fly, and this is Captain Ed McCoy. Hey also the mango fly and we're going to talk to you today a little bit about oh flies and baits uh, my side of the world has started and was kind of born and raised on the world of trout fishing with lures steelhead fishing with lures things like that ed's life and background is doing the same but with flies and that's kind of the unique part about mango fly is that we got a little everything going on so <laughs> we'll take the fish however you want to go but we're going to talk about kind of the similarities, differences, and things like that with the lure game versus the fly game. All right, Jeff. Well, why don't you go ahead and start us off with your program? Maybe give us a little insight into things that you're looking for while you're fishing, um, whether it be characteristics of the baits, the water type you're fishing. Keep it simple, but we kind of start simple and grow bigger. If that works. Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess what I'll do is I'll just start with like when I when I put the boat in and I got a couple guys with me. If I haven't fished for a while, and like the, we're lucky enough to fish every day, and when you're fishing every day, you know what you had yesterday, you know what you had to finish the day, you know what they bit on the morning before if they bit, hopefully they did. Um, but if you hadn't been fishing, there's a few things that I like to do when I go out um, is start on both ends of what I would call the spectrum color wise, and you always know with the water temperature and the water color, you, you know being a guide where you might want to start. But if I didn't know where to start, for me, I would start one real bright bait and then maybe one real dull bait. And if those weren't going, then what I would do is start changing sizes and the depth in which the bait runs. So what are your basic conditions? Let's say bright versus dull. What are you, what are you gonna, how are you gonna tailor your lure choice to like today's conditions. We got bright, sunny, it's cold. Well, in the morning, I'm gonna start out with bright baits, typically anyways, because if you're lucky enough, just start when, the, when day breaks, I usually start with a brighter bait. Okay. But let's say we're just starting, you know, after the sun's been up, it's been cold. I'm gonna just go with my two best. The two sure. that have treated me the best. Confidence lure. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you do it with your flies, but I imagine when you put Confidence. your flies in, and you hadn't fished all winter and you got a spring trout trip, you're going with your two yeah. that you think are just absolutely the ones that you've had the most success over the years. Absolutely. Why? You're going to fish it longer. <laughs> right. 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 But, and you know, and, and, and different lures for different days for sure, and the, depending on the depth of where the fish are living. With, and then uh, you, I see you've got a couple different yeah. flies there. Is that kind of your thing as well? Well, I usually, you know, I base my assortments off a couple of things. One, I'm looking more for an action or depth, right? Mm -hmm. I'm limited kind of in depth, that reality. Uh, fly line's only gonna get you so far, um, you know, basically when you're tying with materials, there's a lot of synthetics out that'll help get your flies deeper, but it's still your limiting factor, mm -hmm. right? So for me, there's, there's a couple triggers I'm also looking for, and that's how the fly behaves and moves in certain water types. Mm -hmm. um, real fast, you know, riffly water, I'm, I'm probably gonna stick to something more like this with a bait fish, because it's gonna do a lot of things. It's gonna push water from the front, it's gonna kick, it's gonna die, it can stall it, I can speed it up, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be able to fish it very slow in that type of water anyway. That speed's gonna swing that fly out mm -hmm. of the strike zone faster. So I'm gonna have to fish it a little quicker. So the other options are, you know, if I need to achieve depth, like early in the season when water temps were colder, you know, I know the classic Madden Circus peanut, weighted eyes in the front, rubber legs, lots of action articulated. It's gonna allow me to get deeper, fish slower, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, the other option is when things start warming up and fish become a little more reactionary, you know, when they're a little more active and you're seeing more fish follow, mm -hmm. you know, this this fly, I believe it's a CJ Sluggo from Montana Fly, you know, it's neutrally buoyant, right? So I can fish this pretty slow, but it'll give you a lot of good kick Right? That, that head really makes it bad. Absolutely. Up. So it'll, it'll stall out the fly, and a lot of times it'll kick left to right. It's also articulated, so you get a little wiggle during the strip. 
But you know, having that fly die in space is a trigger for any predator, right? Mm-hmm. So especially brown trout. Yep. I, I'm assuming you sense. do the same thing with your lures. Yeah, no right? question. Twitching them, pausing them. So it seems to me the head of that fly is doing kind of what the, the bill of this bait's going to do. Sure. It's going to give it the right movement. It's going to help it dart the way you want. It's, it, and that's kind of what this is all about, whether it's this size, this size, right. or what. And you're, you have all different sizes, but that's kind of what makes that fly move real nice, huh? Yep. And, you know, and a lot of the, the good fly designs in today's current scheme of streamers are mm-hmm. coming from the gear world, mm-hmm. right? You got a lot of bulk in the front which allows the back to move more, everything tapers back, right? Tapers out with bulk, being heavier in front, less in the back. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard it described as, you know, party in, party in the back, business in the front. <laughs> right so, on, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, that's, that's a clever way of saying the same thing, but essentially that's what you're doing. So, you know, having knowledge like you do with your lure game and applying it to the streamer game, you know, I'm always paying attention. You know, anytime we fish, I'm watching what you're doing. I'm seeing how your lures behave or, you know what what are you looking for in a specific day and if i can emulate it in a fly i'm going to surely try well and that and that's one of the benefits we have here at mango fly is is we're banging information off of each other whether it's how you fish the bait whether it's how to fish the fly what color yep. how's it swim you know and every now and again i'll catch john ray saying hey how do you think this bait will run and it'll be a fly right but you know he's thinking Yep. Just like you guys are thinking about that, and then I look at a fly like that, and I go, "Well, all right, I don't have anything quite like that." So now I got to figure out how I'm going to take and figure out take something to this nature and maybe make it where sure. I can get it to look something like that. And this is this one's like the deepest diver that I usually will run, and the ray dies the way it does because of that bill. You can see obviously it's going to the dive. This one's going to, and this one's going to do that. I probably pull it out of the camera, but sorry, but the, you know. And with you, your weights are, are, are weight on the fly and weight on the line. Correct. Yep. So this fly isn't going to sink real fast, right? It's right. got a little weight in here for the keel so you can cast it and turn it over better at distance. But, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be limited by how deep my fly line goes. Right. Right. And depending on the size of water, I'm going to have a 250, a 350, maybe a 400, which would be pushing it for most streams that we're fishing around here. But there are some tailwaters that, you know, are... There's holes that are 20 plus feet deep. No, no question. I want to get it down, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, but this fly will allow you to get some depth, but it's still going to be limited. Now, if I'm really trying to scrape the bottom, uh, a weighted fly like the circus peanut, you know, and a little heavier mm-hmm. sink tip, and just understanding you're going to lose gear mm-hmm. and dredge it out, then yeah, you can go down and tickle the floor. But you know, it's still my number one limiting factor is depth. Mm-hmm. When the fish are fired up, doesn't matter. They're right. going to raise up, they're going to chase, they're going to right. follow. Eat it right Hopefully against the water. Ah, you still have 100 right. fish follow and right. maybe 50 of <laughs> them bite it right. you know, on any given day. And then on a tough day, you get three to follow and you get one bite. Yeah, and yeah. 100 would be. Pull your hair up. 100 would be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But keep the Absolutely. math simple. Um, now, I know I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you change the weight of the fly throughout the day? Like, let's say you were, just went through a big deep hole and then you're coming up into a nice long flat with some structure and you know there's some trout that are in that this water right yeah. and you just came out at 15 feet would you stop and change the fly or would you even i mean let's say you got good on it in the deep water right would you continue through that slower water with that same fly because for me with crankbaits i would yeah probably because the reality is um how much more of that skinny water am i going to have before the next deep water scenario right sure so is it worth taking that time for two casts? Mm-hmm. Or do you just run with what you I have? usually just run the same day. Right. Because do you feel also that if they're deep in that in the deep junk, in the deep water, the deep lumber, your odds of finding one up on the flat are probably less than if you found some on the flat to begin with, your program might become different. Yeah, I really think it just depends on the mood of the fish on any given day, right? So mm-hmm. if fish are a little more neutral, um, you're gonna have to probably get deeper to get them going to even get to where their sight cone is. Right. Um, you know, if, if fish are really fired up, I mean, it shouldn't matter, right. right? So to me, it's kind of, do I, I would say when it's colder earlier in the season, I'm probably running heavier. Mm-hmm. And as it warms up in May, I'm probably lightening up the amount of weight I'm fishing in my flies and probably mm-hmm. becoming more into that realm where it's a little more neutrally buoyant. 
Um, but you also have to read the, the situation each day. It's, like you said, it's different, right? So yesterday, you know, maybe this one was on fire. Today, things are a little bit warmer. We got a little cloud cover, maybe some warm rain coming down, and the fish are a little more fired up and optimi you know, mm -hmm. opportunistic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this Cutting style of bait, warm. yeah, this style of bait will really get them. Mm -hmm. You know, because you can do a lot more with a trigger response and a bait that you can stall out and make it look like it's dying than one that's just going to fall out when you stop stripping. Now, the rise and fall and cold to me is big time. You know, that jig action. When the water's cold. Especially when the water's cold. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it catches bet. fish while other, you know, other styles of flies will not. And then the, the, the way that that works in my mind with these crankbaits here is, this is the jazzed up, ready to go fish. This is the two foot deep yeah. bait, you know, maybe four, whatever. <laughs> and then if they don't want to bite, like you said, you got to put it right in their nose or in the sight cone, it's this one. Because this one's going to go down and knock on the wood. Right. I mean, it's going to bounce off the wood. It's going to do all that, and that's You're right. Up that's the right here, then, right? Yeah. Where this bait's going to be here, and they're going to want to have to chase it over their head. And that's the same exact thing as you have with those flies there. And it's it's a really cool thing to be able to talk about this stuff and not have any separation between bait and fly. People, yeah, gear, all it's, that jazz. It's super cool. Absolutely. I mean, it changed my fishing one hundred percent just to get with you guys with your knowledge of the way that just the head of the stream works. Mm -hmm really makes me look at these baits because we go out and I'll fly fish with you guys and watch those baits and you know they'll be dancing like crazy so my whole time I'm going all right now what am I going to have to do to make these run like that because those are working right you know what I mean and then vice versa how are you going to sink it down because this bait's working right now would you say there's any advantage to a fly over a lure under certain conditions I think there is both there's both an advantage for flies in certain conditions and an advantage for lures in certain conditions because I think of the front, the, if the trout are seeing some pressure, sure, bright sunny days, um, things like uh, just kind of just kind of funky, it's kind of stale. I, I believe that the fly is, is a, could possibly be a better go because it's so much softer. It lands softer than a smack of a crankbait. It's quieter going through the water. It doesn't have the rattles. It doesn't have the the obnoxious sound coming off the lure. It's just a nice, smooth, quieter motion. And I think if the trout are, it's kind of funky a little bit and like a little skittish, I think that the fly will, will bring more bites than the gear will. And then on the other hand, when it's a kind of a ratty old overcast rainy day and you're making it rattling and hammering and hammering and hammering, and then I think that would be a day when I would prefer to use the crankbait. Sure. Well, and I think the other thing too, the fly, if you look at it from this perspective, when it's coming through the water, the material at the end of this thing is doing a whole lot of mm -hmm. small, little, tiny micro movements that you can't get with that. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's a trigger. It just depends on, on the fish. But um, I've seen flies work, you know, in all kinds of conditions. But I've also seen lures work much better in right. a lot of well, different Well, and, and you know, absolutely. I've gotten buried by a guy ripping streamers, and I'm fishing crankbaits in the same stretch of river. Yeah. And then it's went the other way as well, where yeah. they wanted that bait, then your flies aren't than the same situation where then I had a better, more productive fish day. But there's for sure times when it goes both ways. Sure. You know, and another thing I noticed like down in Florida, all the fly guides down in Florida that I know personally, they always got a couple spinning rods in their boat. Not because they don't want you to use a fly rod, but because when it's blowing 40 yeah. and it's nasty, it's tough to catch. you can flip a spinning reel into yes. the wind and still have a little bit of fun. Yep. Where a fly throw a 40 into the, into the wind, because you know you got to fish into the wind, that's the only way to bite. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's, there's all kinds of different circumstances where both are more beneficial than the other. Yep. I don't know if that makes sense at all. No, absolutely. Yeah, conditions can dictate your success and what you should be using to have that success. And you know, and knowledge of both is what makes you m the most successful. I oh, think absolutely. Is, you know, I mean, sure. you take a lure and you go out in a day and you see 60 fish and I see 20 on a streamer, well, you're learning a little bit quicker than I am, right? Yeah, and it also could be something as simple as it's deeper. Yep. You know, because if they're piranha biting, <laughs> just whatever, throw a, throw a fly in there or a lure shouldn't in there. Matter. It shouldn't matter. Some days it does, but it shouldn't matter. But it's a, it's a really cool thing to be able to go out as a group, you and I and John as a group, and go fish together and have two or three different rods rigged up with all spin and all flies going and just passing them around and getting to learn stuff about and just shooting 
ideas around each other sure. with that whole thing. That's just so productive for me. I really enjoy that a lot. And just to, the, just to have the knowledge base and, and you just gotta go fishing. Yep, so one more quick question. And this, you probably heard this a lot and I, I hear this in the fly world a lot and I see it a lot. Does size matter? Yeah, I, I think it does. Condition specific all the time? Uh, day to day almost, yeah. really for me. Like, like they make each one of these baits, like they make this bait smaller and they make this bait way bigger. And it might be water temp a little bit too, mm -hmm. because I start out and they'll only want this bait and one a little smaller. And then by the end of May, before the bugs start hatching real good, I might be in the one to twice this long. Sure. And that's just, the longer it gets, the more it does this, the more it rips back and forth. And maybe that's why. Because it's not much deeper. Right. The bigger bait in this style of bait runs about the same depth. What about water conditions, water clarity, dirty versus clear? That would be color for me. Still color? That would be color for okay. me. Yep. If I can find if I can find the size bait they like, then I'm tuning color. Okay. If I if I tune in color and I'm not getting any response, then I'm changing size. You know, I don't Fair know. Enough. And one thing I could really would stress with the streamer and the fly or and the gear thing is don't be afraid to change your Absolutely. fly. Don't be afraid to change your lure. And don't just change color. No. Change the action. <laughs> and when fishing's poor, yeah. don't go out with a lure that you've never tried before hoping for a miracle. If you <laughs> want to see if a lure works right or a fly works right, fish it when they're biting. Yeah. You know, so many people go out and go, oh, I'm not getting any bites. Oh, I've never tried this one before. Well, if the ones that work every day don't, what are the odds? Right. Maybe. And if probably. you got one that's working, don't take it off. Try another two. <laughs> right. And, and retie your knots a lot if you only got one. <laughs> well, I would agree. I mean, there's definitely times when bigger flies work. Um, and it's fairly condition specific, but it varies day to day. I mean, I've had days where I've gone out and I can't get them to eat a small bite size profile. But I throw something bigger on and I can get that fish to respond. That happened to me on Friday on the PM. Like I was fishing these smaller streamers that I had super confidence in on the river. They're just like the bait fish, just like what right. they're eating. But conditions and I don't always bite. dictate right. to go big, right? Right. Sometimes it's just a head scratcher, but yeah. can't be afraid to try. And then I put one on about like that size, a different style of fly with a big old deer hair head on it. And I started moving some trout. And which to me was like, kind of the opposite of the way I think it should go. I think you should have to go Sometimes. smaller, but I was just like, I can't figure it out. Just throw this one on. And it was the, it was one you tied. Okay. And it was one of the great big long streamers you tied for me. He throws it out there, he throws three or four casts and all of a sudden a nice brown trout comes up and just tries to devour it. And I'm like, how did I miss that? Four hours. Right. But it's what it took. Or maybe they just started back. That could be, that could be. Well, anything else you want to add? You know, not offhand, just, I, I think the most important part is just fish as much as you can, change your bait as much as you can, be yeah. down bites. Don't be afraid to change. Mix it up. Change your retrieve, your speed, your action, your size, your color. Mm -hmm. There's an endless list of variables. And basically, and anything that you can change, you gotta try at some point, mm -hmm. especially for if you're sure. not biting. So, you bet. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah. Hopefully you can get some good information. Um, out of this video. It was just kind of a random concept that we decided to do. It's always good to bounce ideas off one another. We commonly do this in the boat from day to day on the phone, traveling to and from the river. So they get a little bit of uh, insight into our lives, I guess, yeah. in between scenes. But anyway, thanks for following us and um, make sure you hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thank you.